Hey everyone, welcome and happy Friday. Happy Friday, we're, absolutely. Yeah, we're just uh, giving everyone a chance to jump in this morning or this afternoon, depending on what time zone that you're in. We've got a really special treat for you today. I have my um, friend and colleague, Dr. Dave Dornfeld, joining us from the New Jersey area, so the East Coast. And I'm gonna tell you all about him here in just a second. Uh, good morning, Tracy. Um, so everybody, there is a chat box at the bottom of your screen, at the bottom of your Zoom screen. <coughs> Excuse me. And the, uh, in the chat box, you can click on that. And then it'll open up a little box to the right of the screen and you can jump in and say hello. And so we love hearing from you guys. So jump in and say good morning. And then, um, <clears throat> and we're gonna go through a presentation today and then afterwards we will open it up for some Q and A. So let me go ahead and do an introduction here really quick. My good friend and colleague, Dr. David Dornfeld, um, he is board certified anti-aging and pediatric special needs expert at the Family Wellness Center in Red Bank, New Jersey. And Dr. Dornfeld has been focusing on environmental medicine concerns and how to repair disease caused by infections um, and environmental exposures. And he's been doing this for over 34 years. So this guy is an expert. And I had reached out to him um, because I had the opportunity to get to hear him speak. And he is a wonderful teacher. He does a wonderful job explaining things. And, and, uh, and he's even gonna show some slides today. So we're gonna go through a slideshow presentation because visuals can be really great. <clears throat> and I just wanna share a few things that were on my mind last night and this morning. Um, in regards to what's going on right now, this virus, it's not something for you to fight. We're not gonna fight the virus and win like that. The virus is here to stay, just like the flu virus and every other virus that's been around since the beginning of time. Viruses don't just disappear. So what do we need to do? We need to take better care of ourselves. And we need to understand how resilient our immune systems are if we're taking the proper care of our bodies. And so Dr. Dornfeld is gonna spend an hour talking to you guys and teaching you how your how your body works how environmental toxins and infections can actually cause problems that can you know shut down your immune function and um, and this education that we're doing every week having different people on this stuff is super important uh, because we need to learn how to make ourselves more resilient for example we all know somebody who like gets the flu every year almost they're getting and, and they get sick all the time and then we know other people who like never get it why do you think that is it's not random right a lot of it has to do with our immune system and even for people who do get the flu some can get over it very very quickly while others it becomes you know um almost uh you know it can almost kill them and so why does that happen why do some people get over it very quickly while other people don't it's because they're taking really good care of their bodies and they're doing everything they can to optimize. So with that, we're gonna go, go ahead and get started. Thank you, Dr. Dornfeld, for being here with us today. Thank you very much for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Good afternoon, everybody. And good morning to the people in the uh, mountains zone, as well as in the Pacific Coast uh, time zone. I really wanna thank Elena uh, uh, for inviting me here to, uh, excuse me, Elena, for inv inviting me here. Um, because we really want to share the information. I've had a chance on joining her on the Tribe Talk for the last couple of weeks. And it's really a fascinating group of docs who, uh, or professionals who get to share some of their information from their experiences on trying to help people get through this disease. We're not taking care of diseases, we're taking care of people. So one of my major themes of life is treat the person who has a disease and not the disease the person has. And we can do that a number of ways. And we're gonna to try to talk about how the environment influences us and our immune system's ability to stay strong and to fight or get weakened because we have 5G or we have glyphosate or pesticides or non-organic food or not a good microbiome. 
and heavy metals and plastics and all these things negatively impact our situation. Um, uh, we're blessed to have this kind of a situation. I usually speak uh, between eight to 10 times a year uh, at various conferences. I see Honey here from Taka um, joining us. Thank you so much for coming. Um, and usually I work with her on an autism conference every single year in trying to share the information. We don't have that kind of world. Our world has changed. We don't have the opportunity to get into a group of 200, 300 people in the audience and parents who are asking questions about why is my autistic child not being able to get through the fact that we wrap our food in aluminum foil and screws them up or messes up their brain function one way or another or their gut. So I just wanna take a look in great detail. In some cases I have okay, about 20 slides that I've taken from various PowerPoint presentations I've done over the years. And, and the beauty of Zoom, um, I, I just found out what the word Zoom meant two weeks ago. So I'm really naive in this topic and thank um, Greg, uh, who helped uh, her husband who was fantastic in getting me organized. Uh, so we're gonna share some PowerPoint stuff. We're gonna try to go on uh, an understanding that coronavirus has been around for decades. This novel COVID-19 has not been around for decades. And that's what we have a problem with um, right now that we're working with. So if I say coronavirus, please forgive me. I do mean COVID-19 currently. Because coronavirus is like a cold. And the cold we have, um, let's see if I can get my slides to work. There we go, just give me one sec. You know, you don't wanna get a disease, you wanna get a cold out of this. So it's really a lot easier if we can just boost our immune system. My title slide, my goal in life is always to keep our diet and environment as toxin free as possible in order to promote the quality of life and prevent disease. That's really a mouthful when you look at this beautiful, clean air, beautiful scenery around us, and unfortunately, we don't have that situation around us all the time. Um, some of the quotes I use to live by, doctors of the future will give no meds, but interest his patients to the care of the human frame in diet and the cause and prevention of disease. Thomas Edison stated that many years ago. But some William Osler uh, really hit home when he said one of the first duties of a physician is to educate the masses and not take medicine. So we wanna think about why do some people not need to take blood pressure medicines and diabetes medicines and all those other good items. Well, they're, they're taking care of themselves. They may have predisposition. The genes may load the gun, but really the environment pulls the trigger and everybody who speaks at these conferences um, will talk about that kind of a cliche, but it's really important to realize these things that we're talking about. If you look at the statistics on COVID-19, 80% of us are going to be exposed. 80% of us are going to be exposed. Do everybody get disease? Does everybody have a problem with it? No, actually only 5% will have critical cases from it. And if the 5% of us only have critical cases, then what's going on? Those people have predispositions. Those people's immune systems don't work well. And they really, some of them really do have a terrible problem. You know, the medium time for onset is for mild cases about two weeks. That's why if you know anybody who's been exposed, they need to stop to be secluded and quarantine for at least two weeks. For severe and critical cases, it's three to six weeks. And there are some people who die. I mean. 2.3% of the bad cases really die in this country and worldwide. That's from the World Health Organization. Um, and they can live prolonged on ventilators. And then there's talk about our ventilators great for us or not. Um, it all depends on the situation. I'm not a, a pulmonologist, but from what we're hearing, sometimes more oxygen, less pressure is better. Just do advance, I'm good, okay. This is a busy slide. I just got this recently, uh, four days ago, there was a, a talk with, uh, I'm a, a MDBIP concierge doc and had a big uh, meeting and discussion. So I was able to get these last couple slides from them um, the last two days. <clears throat> so we wanna think about factors that clearly worsen our outcomes. If you're over the age of 80, 
If you have underlying medical conditions, cardiovascular, 10%, respiratory, only 7%, I was surprised. Diabetes, immunocompromising, cancer, but obesity is huge problem. BMI greater than 30 is a huge problem. Like most of the diseases, why is there a 4.5 to 1% autism male to female ratio? Well, women have estrogen, men have testosterone. Testosterone does not protect against the environment to the same way that the antioxidant estrogen does. And that's a huge problem for um, the ASD population because they are heavy metal retention kids. And if they can't detox properly, then we have a big problem. So we'll talk a lot about detox um, and more importantly about prevention. Smokers and vapors have more of a problem. Um, the ICU bed status, we all know about it. We watch the news every single day. We hear all these terrible events going on. They seem to have enough ventilators now in, in the city here. I'm, I'm in uh, coastal New Jersey here. Uh, New York and New Jersey are hit pretty hard. Um, you really have to take care of yourself, boost your immune system. If you have uh, some of the symptoms we see, a lot of people have anemia. It does break down heme. They get muscle aches. Uh, liver functions go up. If you have Lyme disease, one of our lovely things we get to, to take care of in our communities, um, you have a problem already with your immune system. You know most people don't get a tick bite and get through three or four weeks of antibiotics and never have a problem again unless you treat them right on time. And I'm very aggressive with my treatment for, for Lyme disease patients, and hopefully we keep the risks down for recurrent and persistent Lyme. But Lyme disease is a big problem and Lyme and COVID is a double whammy. Um, there are some factors that might influence your outcome. There are a couple of really poor studies that are out there, and these are just highlights. There was one really poor study, uh, which said that if you had type O, you had uh, less of a chance than if you were type A. Um, if you have a poor immune response, we know that that's a true situation, and we're gonna talk about how we can keep our immune response to become less problematic. We need to take care of our, our diet, we need to take care of our exercise program, appropriate nutrients. I'm gonna give you a whole list of nutrients at the very end on what I think is really important for us to hone in on. Uh, low vitamin Ds, almost everybody has low vitamin D level. I like vitamin Ds between 60 and 90 um, on your blood level. So everybody's different how much you need to take in order to get that uh, level. Environmental toxins and heavy metals, that's what I specialize in, in, in heavy metal detoxification. Uh, methodology, and we need to identify that. We'll spend time identifying where the heavy metals come from, which cause inflammation, which cause immune dysfunction. Uh, pesticides, poor diet, glyphosate, 5G, et cetera, et cetera. These are things that all can uh, markedly affect our system. Um, there's a, there was one study that came out of Europe on uh, Tylenol versus NSAIDs, uh, the non anti-inflammatories. I've been a big anti-inflammatory fan. Uh, using Motrin or Aleve or Advil or um, other agents for quite a while. They seem to show an increased uh, problem with fluid accumulation in your lung if you truly have COVID uh, ARDS symptoms. So it's recommended still to this day that if you have COVID ARDS especially, you want to avoid non anti-inflammatories. Sorry, I missed the letter. Uh, non um, NSAIDs. Um, and it's AIDS is what it should say. But the keynote there, they're telling you to take Tylenol, Tylenol, and Tylenol, one of the things it does is it blocks the conversion of N-acetylcysteine into glutathione. Glutathione is our number one intracellular antioxidant, which means it, it's the garbage man. It'll help the cells get rid of toxins. If you can't take, if you cannot make glutathione because you're taking Tylenol, then you need to take, in my opinion, 1,800 milligrams of N-acetylcysteine per Tylenol in order to allow the NAC pathway to express formation with glycine and glutamine to form glutathione, our garbage man. Really important. So when they tell kids to take a vaccine or adults and they say, oh, by the way, here's two Tylenol, Let's keep your aluminum and your toxins in your system longer, is what they're saying at the same time. If you don't give the person Tylenol and N-acetylcysteine combination, then I think you're gonna cause a big problem. I'm sorry, my phone's ringing in the background, which I'm not gonna answer it. Um, 
Um, oh, good, they hung up. Um, the ICU data, um, if it's a patient, I will get back to you, I promise. Uh, for ICU data, um, most of the people who are admitted to ICUs are males and are overweight, diabetic, pre-diabetic. Um, there's been a lot of good patient outcomes that I've had, as well as other my colleagues, using Plaquenil, azithromycin. I've actually gotten intravenous vitamin C uh, instituted in a couple of patients in the hospital scene. I use three grams every six hours IV. In my office, I would use 50 grams. Again, if they have no G6PD um, deficiencies um, in their bloodstream. And then zinc is really important to, to work along uh, with Plaquenil. Uh, today had a study that came out of University of Chicago where there's a trial that's ongoing on remdesivir. Um, again, it's like whale watching, you know? When, when you find a new thing, everybody goes to this side of the boat. Oh, there's a whale over there. And everybody leans to that side. That's the next best therapy. And then, oh, there's a whale on that side. And everybody jumps on that bandwagon. So I'm just trying to make you aware of, of what's been out there and what can work. And they're all waiting for this vaccine. That's going to be a great miracle. Hopefully, it'll get tested properly. Hopefully, it'll be safety behind it. Vaccines do help people out. But sometimes too many vaccines combined with each other may not be the best answer here. In this case, we need to find an answer to slow down the spread and to protect ourselves. Last night, I listened to Mark Hyman, who gave a webinar. And, and again, thank God for Zoom and webinars out there, because you really can, instead of having to go to a conference to see some of these great docs, um, hear their point of view. And he gave a talk last evening, and he said, COVID-19 is a preventative lifestyle illness. If you can prevent the bad onslaught of the environment around you and keep your immune system boosted and support your immune system by taking various supplements, stop putting crap in your system, you win. The real weapons of mass destruction, in my opinion, are highly processed, pesticide sprayed, high glycemic, low fiber, food-like substances stored in plastic containers. Not everybody's gonna have all of them at the same time, but as we heard yes, last week from Dr. Tom and some of the, patient, the people in the audience were talking, it's like, yes, I got rid of my plastic containers. I only have glass containers when I store my, my uh, items in the refrigerator or in the freezer. That's great. You want to reduce your phthalates. Those are inflammatory mediators. You want to avoid a lot of these items here. And sugar is the enemy. High glycemic food, uh, chemicalized food is absolutely the enemy. Um, you need to think about what you're eating. I, I take the quote, you, we are what we eat. I add the word eats afterwards. We are what we eat eats. What does that mean? That means if we're eating a cow and the cow was fed genetically modified corn, then we're eating genetically modified cow. If we're eating a uh, chicken that's fed arsenic and it's feed, we're eating arsenic. So you want to think about when you're going to have sushi tuna, uh, if eventually you can go to a restaurant again. Um, you want to avoid these things because that's mercury. You want to try to avoid compounding your life with various toxins and, and various agents. We want free-range, grass-fed, grass-finished, if we can find it, organic, locally grown, with quality fats. We want uh, avocado oil and olive oil, extra virgin. And we can't cook with extra virgin olive oil at very high temperatures. You want to try, if you're going to cook, uh, fry anything over 400 degrees, you should use coconut oil or avocado oil because they won't turn rancid at the high temperatures. You, you know, there's a lot of little little items that you have to think about. This is a great list, but you know, everybody knows extra virgin olive oil is great. Well, it doesn't do great at high temperatures. You want to know when you can have certain things. So these kind of a situation uh, sessions are really helpful to try to get people's opinions. And I love the give and take at the Q&A at the very end. Um, I use this slide quite often. I got this from Dr. Ray. He was a, one of the leaders in environmental medicine that taught me a huge volume, me and plenty of other docs around the world on, on these topics. Um, you want to think about your environmental load. What's going into your total body? And I use this analogy when I do like a hair analysis on people, and I want to talk about what's going into the body. Um, so all these items on both sides are what's going into the person. And then when we do a chelator or a, something that will be a magnet to pull it out of the bath of a life, that will see what comes out of the body when we put some kind of an attractive item or a, a magnet to pull the stuff out of the body. 
So you want to think about all these different items that are affecting us. Mold is a huge issue, which causes immune dysfunction. We can stop sunspots. We can stop a lot of these items. But we can try to reduce some of these major events and shut your Wi-Fi off at night would be a beautiful thing uh, in order to get the, the EMFs down at least for a bit uh, would be much more uh, helpful for people. We want to think about the environmental exposures. So I'm definitely going to make this slide available to everybody. Um, I'll leave it up after we bring it down. So just you can take a picture of it if you want. But this is a, a handout I hand to every one of my patients all the time. You need to think about the heavy metals that lead to toxic buildup and progression. Remember that bisphenol A is a hormone disruptor. You know, you don't want to have, that's why we had that whole BPA event when we were talking about what the nipple should be on the, the, the baby bottle and plastics, et cetera. It's a hormone disruptor. Well, your, your receipt you get at a, at a uh, gas station or at a supermarket, that shiny surface has bisphenol A on it. Your what used to be an airline ticket when you used to go on an airplane, that shiny surface is, is BPA. It's a hormone disruptor. You're not going to die from it, but why put things into you that can affect your systems? It's not good for us. Mercury is in vaccines. It, it's in dental amalgams. 50% of your, your silver amalgam in your mouth has mercury in it. Um, fish, uh, the higher you're on the food chain, the more fish uh, the more uh, contaminated with mercury uh, the fish will be. High fructose GMO corn syrup is loaded with mercury. Uh, forest fires are interesting. The, the mercury vapor lands on the leaves. The leaf gets burned up in the air. The mercury vapor flies in the air, doesn't get destroyed, lands on the lake, feeds the fish, and then evaporates back up again and lands on the leaves. It's a perfect cycle and it doesn't get destroyed. Uh, lead is in the water, it's in air pollution, it's in paint, it's in the soil. Uh, we used to have leaded gas in, in our fuel. The soil still has lead from when we got rid of it in the late 70s. Uh, chocolate, unless it's organic, is heated up in lead vats. Uh, so we can get some lead levels from your chocolate. Sorry. Um, candle wicks have lead in it. Crystal glasses are lead crystal. You're not going to die because you lit a candle and had a glass of wine and a crystal glass. But again, why additively put things into your system that cause inflammation, which causes immune dysfunction? Aluminum-based underarm deodorant should totally be removed out of everybody's life. Aluminum-based cooking materials, aluminum foil, aluminum Teflon coated cookware, uh, takeout tins, and acids. Maalox mylanta, top first ingredient, is aluminum hydroxide. Aluminum is an inflammatory uh, contributor. Certain uh, cheeses that are processed will have aluminum in it. Um, I always re will use parchment paper between my aluminum foil and let's say my garlic bread or my lasagna that I'm cooking in a glass container. Um, um, you really wanna avoid your aluminum touching your food, especially if you're heating it up. Uh, you don't wanna store cold food in aluminum foil, use parchment paper, um, which can go to higher temperature. Cadmium is in the water, it's in the air, it's in the soil, it's in costume jewelry, especially if it comes from China. Um, another one of the China great products we have in this world. Our arsenic is in the water. They actually allowed for arsenic to be legally put into the water system years ago. Um, it's in shellfish, therefore, um, and actually we, what the neat part about arsenic, if there is a neat part, chickens are fed arsenic to make them fatter and plumper so they can get more per pound. So the chicken, then we'll poop and that chicken poop is used as fertilizer. The fertilizer will get into our water system. It'll feed our shellfish. It'll feed the race. They spray it on apples. They spray it now on almonds. They even spray it now on avocados. And we know that avocado happens to be one of the lowest um, pesticide fruits. If you look at the environmental working group, it's number 47 uh, on the top 50 on which is the least pesticide food, but now we're telling you that we're coating it with arsenic at the very end. Well, you need to find a way of reducing the items, uh, the toxins that are on your fruit. So if you don't know this, please write this down. Please take the fruit you're planning on using or vegetables you're planning on using that day, soak them in one ounce of baking soda along with 100 ounces of water, one ounce of baking soda in 100 ounces of water, soak it for 12 minutes, and a good portion of the external pesticides will come off your fruits and vegetables. If it's a non-organic apple that has genetic modification to it, then it's not gonna come out and you're gonna have pesticides inside the fruit. But, because that's, again, strawberries and apples, those, those guys are 
highly uh, affected by pesticides. You really need to be careful. You want to buy as much organic as possible. Uh, antimony is a flame retardant clothing and cloudy plastics. Cloudy plastics are like a, uh, um, a milk container or an apple cider container. Um, so you want to think about that kind of cloudy plastic that you can't see through. You don't want to get that. Get, get milk and cardboard containers, please. Or glass bottles be the best. Um, also, gunpowder has antimony in it. And then tin, titanium, nickel, and silver are things we want to also try to avoid. Titanium dioxide we know is a sunblock uh, that we use quite readily. Please use zinc oxide instead. And a lot of poor quality vitamins are filled with titanium dioxide. We don't want to put that into our system. So look carefully in the small, in the small print on your vitamins to make sure that you're not having a, a titanium dioxide. So I'm going to take that slide away. So if you want to get a picture of it, grab onto it now. Maybe uh, we'll be able to have it available for us that Eleanor will have it available down the road. Some of the conditions that have been having problems with associated disorders of inflammation, problems with detoxification and oxidative stress, which is like rusting, are listed here. Immune dysfunction is one of the keys. So if our immune system is hit by a number of these toxins, we have more problems with Alzheimer's dementia, let's say, if we had a lot of aluminum exposure or arthritis problems, Crohn's colitis, if we don't take care of our microbiome, autism and cancer, autoimmune disease, diabetes, Lyme disease, if we can't get rid of some of these problems, Lyme patients stay as Lyme patients for many, many years. And I'm sure there's plenty of people out there. Uh, looks like there's 91 participants currently on this uh, meeting right now. And thank you so much for all coming here. Um, but Lyme disease is a really difficult ailment to work with. And if their immune system is affected by these problems in our world, um, it's gonna be much harder to control it. I do a lot of work with hyperbaric therapies. Um, hyperbaric therapies can markedly improve many of these symptoms because it's a great anti-inflammatory. It oxygenates the tissues uh, tremendously. And that's what we want in this disease. Um, we found uh, that there are places around the world that are using hyperbaric therapy um, with higher pressure uh, units and getting good results in COVID-19. But when I use uh, detoxification capabilities along with hyperbarics, I get a nice one-two punch for all of these diseases listed here. I'm just going to do one quick slide on autism. Um, many of you may have friends or families or have children that you're blessed with that have special needs. Um, it is definitely one of the toughest diagnoses to work with. Um, I, I love these two boys. Uh, these are brothers, uh, and the father allowed me to, to use this picture here. In fact, the last time I did one of the webinars, um, there was a picture of, uh, I believe it was Santino, holding on to the camera, the, the iPhone, of me giving the, uh, the lecture, and, and Dad took a picture of that in the background. I thought that was one of the cutest things. Um, but these two adorable children are getting better and better with the therapies out there, but they still are stuck. And we have to find out how to find a way to break the gridlock, to interrupt their cycles. And I, I, not everybody is autistic, but these same principles have to do with taking care of people. You need to remove the, di remove the dietary and environmental stressors. You need to bolster our nutrition. Probiotics are so important to work with um, fish oils, multivitamins, coenzyme Q10, one of the most important antioxidants we have, uh, is so vital for uh, anybody. It's anybody who has a heart and cardiovascular disease basically needs CoQ10. And we've really seen a reduction in cardiovascular mortality uh, in my, uh, my patients who use coenzyme Q10. Um, you need to watch out for the various infections. Uh, maybe many people might know of PANS or PANDAS, uh, uh, pediatric and neuropsychiatric disorders associated with strep, or other diseases, um, mycoplasma, chlamydia, et cetera, um, and Lyme disease, of course, and other tick-borne diseases. Uh, we wanna reduce our inflammation. We need to improve our biochemistry. Uh, we need to really improve our immune function, and that's what I need to get across to you, everybody. It's our immune system that's at a loss here, so we need to work on that. We wanna detox, including chelation therapy, and people are, don't know anything about chelation therapy, and I'm going to give you a really quick blurb on it in a couple slides, um, but it's a safe, effective therapy where you can put a magnet into a person 
uh, which is basically an amino acid, a protein with some vitamins that can grab onto and remove toxins out of your system through your urine or your stool. We use hyperbaric therapies. We, uh, for those children who need speech therapy, APA therapy, uh, we need to always continue working along those lines. Um, what is chelation? Again, it's to grab onto and remove items. As we know, more environmental exposures uh, are more readily in kids on the spectrum being affected. And because they have an altered detox pathway, they have more of a problem. Well, if you have um, lupus or multiple sclerosis or other autoimmune diseases, uh, or chronic Lyme, or persistent Lyme, excuse me, I can't say chronic Lyme. I have to call it persistent Lyme. The uh, CDC doesn't believe in chronic Lyme, but they do believe in persistent Lyme. And we have persistent viral infections like this COVID event, and it's staying around our system longer, and we're getting worse, and the Plaquenil and the, the azithromycin is not winning. Well, what else is causing the problem? Oh, I'm inflamed. I'm eating McDonald's because I have to get food on the go. Well, that's not a good thing for us. Um, you have to watch these items. Children with autism have methylation problems. There's an MTHFR gene abnormality amongst many other abnormalities. Many people have heard of this um, gene deficiency. 35 to up to 55% of the population, depending on where you read statistics, have a problem where you cannot methylate your folic acid to go down the pathway to make glutathione, which is our detox pathway. And we can't do that. We also can't make neurotransmitters well. We have a lot of people who have depression or they have dopamine problems or they have anxiety problems. And that's because they have this gene abnormality that's being clogged in its function when you use aluminum foil or you use a pesticide coated food or you have genetic modification where Roundup is put into your body. Um, I consider autism a heavy metal retention disorder. And if we have persistent Lyme, or if we have immune dysfunction, we really need to think about how can we get heavy metals out of our body and mold removal out of our body in order to improve significantly. Chelation can be done intravenously, which is the best way. It can be done orally, rectally, or topically. It doesn't really work as well. But you want to try to find out, does the person respond to this therapy? Not everybody needs to chelate. But if a person is stuck, and he's tried A, B, C, D, E, F, and they haven't done G, which is be, let's say, your step you would do chelation after you've done diet, vitamins, exercise, 100% gluten, gluten free for an autistic child, casein free, gone through the whole bit, getting yeast out of the system, taking care of the person. Hey, let's see if now they can poop, now they can pee well. Let's give them a chelator, let's give them a, a urine challenge. Let's give them an agent. Let's, excuse me, let's collect their urine for six hours and see what kind of heavy metals come out of the person. So this is a test on a five-year-old, which I did a number of years ago. And he has a little bit of, expo of, of excretion of these guys without a chelator. And on the same day, we did a urine collection where we did post a chelator, actually two chelators in this case, calcium EDTA and DMSA, and lo and behold, his lead went from one to 63, or his aluminum went from zero to 130 micrograms per deciliter, uh, excuse me, micrograms per gram of creatinine. So you can see before a chelator, after a chelator, wow, chelation actually removes metals on this, this kid. Let's see what happens as we do a number of them. And more importantly, how does it respond clinically? That's the key to life. Doesn't matter how they do on paper, although parents like to see this on paper. And over time, and I didn't put a whole series of slides, over time, the levels went down. And more importantly, the kids started to become more aware, started to speak, had his bowel habits working better, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we want to try to always think about how do we reduce our toxic burden accumulation? I know I've said a number of times before on metals to talk about where they come from. These guys are things besides metals because it's not just heavy metals. It's off-gassing. If you get clothes, we don't get clothes now from dry cleaners. I understand that. But in the past, we were getting clothes back from the dry cleaner. And some people put the plastic bag with the dry cleaning clothes in their closet with the plastic bag attached to it. 
keeping those chemicals inside the closet for periods of time. Please take the plastic bag off your clothes and put it in a room with a window open so they can off gas. And then eventually a day later, maybe put them in your closet. Try to minimize your exposure to chlorine. Um, people have pools in their backyard. They wanna lay in the pool, go in the pool, lay in the sun, go to the pool, lay in the sun. Some people don't do well with chlorine. I have parents take magnesium sulfate, which is Epsom salts and water, and put it in a spray bottle and spray down their skin afterwards. And lo and behold, they can get rid of some of the toxins from the, the chlorine that's on their skin a little bit easier and quicker. They're gonna take a shower with chlorine water. We understand that. You can't avoid everything, but you wanna minimize. You wanna wear 100% cotton clothing. You wanna avoid flamey tonic clothing. Try to avoid fluoride treatments and fluoride toothpaste. Oh, but the dentists say I need to have a fluoride treatment. Okay, there are other ways you can do therapies to take care of your gums and your teeth with quality toothpastes without having to go with fluoride treatments. Um, fluoride is something that blocks iodine. Iodine is beneficial and, excuse me, um, essential for thyroid function. We have a huge problem with hypothyroidism in this country, secondary to the chemicals that block iodine, which are chlorine, fluoride, and bromine. Um, so you want to minimize your fluoride use. Uh, you don't want to play on pressure-treated wood. A lot of times you have that womanized wood. Some people have raised gardens around there where they plant their vegetables, and it's all womanized arsenic-coated wood. So let's put the arsenic in the soil that we're going to use. We're using organic soil wrapped in arsenic on the outside. No, let's try to avoid it. Again, these things are additive. Use a purifier in your room. Try to avoid those light-up shoes. Try to avoid plastic furniture, aluminum-free baking powder we talked about, you know, Teflon-coated cookware, um, herbicides and pesticides. Please don't use Roundup. Please don't use Roundup. Please don't use Roundup. Use a gallon of vinegar, three cups of salt, three tablespoons of dishwashing liquid. Put it in a spray and spray it around your items. It will kill your weeds or your grass or your vegetables if you put it on that. But one gallon of vinegar, one, three cups of uh, salt, and three tablespoons of dishwashing liquid combined will kill your weeds. And we look at your lipsticks and make sure there's no lead in your lipstick because a lot of the foundations will have bismuth and a lot of the lipsticks will have lead. And then your recyclable numbers on your plastic bottle. Notice I have glass bottle water. This is what we want to try to make sure we have you don't want number three, number six, and number seven on your plastic bottles or containers. That lid you get on the top lid of a, a coffee cup when you get it from Wawa or wherever uh, is going to be having a number seven. One slide on tick-borne diseases. Um, we hate them. Ticks are all over the place. Whatever you listen to in the world and it says, oh, a tick has to be under my skin for 24 to 48 hours before it causes a problem, according to the CDC. They don't know anything about Lyme disease. I'm sorry. Um, they may have some ideas. Infectious disease doctors also go along with the CDC guidelines. You need to think outside the box when you're talking about tick-borne disease. Ticks that are attached for more than 15 minutes can transmit Poisson virus, can transmit certain bacteria, fungi, and other tick-borne diseases. Um, blood tests are notoriously inaccurate. And they really are of no value uh, if you take them too early. So you, the blood tests, like the blood tests for this virus that's out there right now, are antibody tests. What does that mean? It's going to see if your body can make antibodies against a virus or a bacteria. If it's done too early, you're not going to get IgM antibodies right away. If it's done way to lay down the road, your body might make IgG antibodies. Remember, the, the first thing you get is an IgM antibody, and eventually you get an IgG antibody. Once they develop an IgM and an IgG test that's readily available and insurance might cover, um, you might find out, hey, IgM, I still have the disease. IgG positive, I had the disease. IgM negative, I don't currently have it. I just said a mouthful, so I'll use one analogy so you understand that. I had chicken pox when I was younger. I had measles when I was young. I could test right now and I would be IgG positive for measles or chicken pox. I don't have it now. I would be IgM negative. If you understand that, that would really help understand when they keep talking about these testing. I need an IgG test or an IgM test. PCR test means it's active antibody that's being detectable, but they don't know if you currently have it or not. You've been exposed to it.
Yeah, there's been, yeah, there's been a lot of, a lot of uh, concern over the testing. I just wanted to jump in really quick, Dr. Dornfeld. Um, Dave. Dave. Um, just so that we can just uh, talk about this for a minute, because for some of you listening, uh, you may be wondering, well, how does, you know, what does Lyme have anything to do with what's going on now? Uh, well, for those of you who who know that you have Lyme disease and you've undergone the standard treatments and you're still sick because you will still be sick or it will come back and, and you will end up being sick. Um, you know, the, Dr. Dornfeld, uh, Dave, and, uh, and, and Dr. Tori and myself, uh, you know, there are a handful of uh, specialists around the country who can help with that. And this is a really big deal because, um, you know, typically when people have Lyme disease, they also oftentimes have other co-infections and other environmental toxins that are right alongside the Lyme disease. So it's really wreaking havoc on your immune system. Secondly, there are many people out there who are very, very sick who have never been diagnosed. They don't know that they have it and, and they haven't been diagnosed properly uh, because no one has identified the Lyme. Um, the, you know, the standard, a lot of the standard testing out there, a lot of the doctors just don't know how to use it. Um, and so people will end up getting diagnosed with things like fibromyalgia and everything else under the sun, when in fact, it you know, turns out that the root causes Lyme. And so, um, you know, if, if you're working at trying to figure out how to put your health back in order and you have a lot of unanswered questions, um, consider that, you know, that the, you know, whoever you've been seeing just ha that they haven't found the true underlying root causes of your issues. Um, all right, Dave, go ahead and take it back. I just thought I would try to tie in how, you know, Lyme disease, you know, could be affecting their immune system, you know, for the current situation. And there's a lot of people who have Lyme or tick-borne disease, because when you get a tick bite, you don't just get Lyme, you get Borrelia. Uh, Babesia, Bartonella, excuse me. I'm on call, but I will answer that eventually. Um, um, and and those, those co-infections become a big problem. And if you don't treat immediately, your Borrelia species can change its shape. You know, it, it, everybody thinks it's a little uh, squiggly spirochete that can hit with an antibiotic and dies. Unfortunately, that, that spirochete forms a little ball. Um, which is a round body and you need to use various antibiotics at the same time to work on the inside of the spirochete on the outside of the spirochete and to take care of the round body event here and a lot of times a lot of these organisms will form a slime layer around one another to protect themselves called a biofilm it's like the tartar on your teeth it's like a biofilm your, your dentist has to go scrape it away or ultrasound it away in order to clean the biofilm off of your teeth well, the same situation occurs uh, with the, the penetration of antibiotics to get into this Lyme critter. Uh, this colony does not do well with just an antibiotic. Some people can do really well with one antibiotic. Doxycycline is given for three weeks or four weeks and does a great job. Um, but a lot of times, if it turns to a little ball, if it had its friend Bartonella or Babesia or Anaplasma, Mycoplasma, uh, the list goes on, associated with it, then the antibiotic therapy might have to go longer and you would need to do a lots of other things to support the immune system. Um, a couple of minutes I'm going to spend on hyperbarics and then we'll have time for questions and answers. Um, I alluded to this in the prior that hyperbaric therapies can be very helpful to put more oxygen into the plasma. So if we look at, at the, um, the hemoglobin, the oxygen carrying capacity of your blood cell is based on hemoglobin. Uh, the amount of oxygen in your plasma is minimal. When you go into hyperbaric conditions, you increase the oxygen cap capacity of the plasma section. And that's the important part because that gets in, that's like liquid. When you cut yourself and you bleed, you have red cells and you have liquid. The liquid is called plasma. So if we can get uh, oxygen dissolved into the liquid portion of the cell, um, over here, this is before hyperbarics, this is after hyperbarics, the red cell is 98% oxygen saturated at room air if you have a reasonable set of lungs and are not a COPD emphysema patient. But if you um, put yourself with oxygen on your nose, it'll still have a 98% to 100% oxygen saturation here, but minimal dissolved bubbles of oxygen in your plasma. 
under hyperbaric conditions, you can see dissolved bubbles of oxygen in the plasma, which can cross into the blood-brain barrier. It can cross into the little nooks and crannies where these big red blood cells cannot get into. Your brain makes up 2% of your body weight, but uses 20% of your oxygen. And if you have those, cap those alveoli that are not doing well in your lung because your lungs are filled with fluid, or your tissues are having a problem because there's too much surfactant in your um, respiratory drive, not allowing your cells to open up, putting extra oxygen into the person is what's winning. The pressure from the ventilator, we all do things, you know, we've, I heard a, a really great talk the other day. We are trained very well in taking care of people based on the presentation. We know that if a person comes in with um, ARDS, they need to go on a ventilator. That's how we treat people. But unfortunately, this ARDS is not the same, adult respiratory distress syndrome, is not the same as the other ones. Um, so I, uh, I, I just want you to be aware of that. Unfortunately, my computer has frozen. I cannot advance this. Well, while you're waiting, while you're waiting for that to advance, there just might be a little bit of a lag. Um, someone in the Facebook uh, group who is watching us live right now is asking something that is uh, pertaining to um, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So I'll go ahead and ask you that right now. Sure. Um, they are wanting to know if um, HBOT therapy is okay for people who have glaucoma. Um, it all depends if it's narrow angle glaucoma or not, and depends on the pressure that you're using. It's another issue there. So the, uh, there we go. Um, I think I just lost your, uh, can you see me again there? Let's go to share screen. Um, it all depends on the pressure that you have inside of your, um, chamber and the degree if you're of narrow angle glaucoma or not. Um, so I'm sorry for not giving you a full answer on that topic. You have to proceed with caution. So a lot of the times it, it can cause a little bit of changing of the shape. So if anybody's doing hyperbaric on the high pressure therapy, they should not be getting their eyeglass prescription adjusted because their eyeball will change a little bit of its shape uh, during the procedure and for about a week or so after until they stop it. So that would be one thing that you want to be aware of as far as um, contraindications for hyperbaric, it would be if you have emphysema, if you would be if you recently had a chest tube, or if you have um, a history of your lung spontaneously collapsing on yourself at one point of your life. That means about 97% of the population can use hyperbaric therapies, but it's always good to speak with your physician uh, in great detail about everything that you, um, whatever you have in your system. Uh, from a medical predisposition for complications. So these are the items I've used hyperbarics for in my practice, immune dysfunction, Lyme disease, huge improvement there, stroke patients, traumatic brain injury. We've gotten people out of uh, fractures in 40% of the time. So a lot of times people say, oh my God, I have to wear a cast for six weeks. We can knock it down probably to three or four weeks, um, in many cases less than that, depending on how frequent you go in the chamber. Uh, we've had some great results with these guys. Uh, I'm not going to give you a, a hyperbaric commercial. Just want you to be aware that there's a lot of different items that you can use it for. It's a fabulous anti-inflammatory. You want to improve oxygenation to your tissues and circulation. People think about hyperbarics and wound care. Well, they also think about it in high altitude sickness. So this disease, this ARDS they call syndrome, really mimics mountain sickness or high altitude pulmonary edema. And I've seen a couple of cases of HAPE. Um, a very good friend of mine had HAPE up at skiing at altitude. And we had to get him down where there was oxygen and pressure reduction. So they were able to not have as much of a problem. We didn't have a hyperbaric chamber at, at altitude where we were at. Um, but it had a help in getting oxygen to a system, knock the inflammation down, give them some Lasix, get the fluid out and take care of the problem. We've used hyperbarics to help mitochondria, biogenesis. So mitochondria is our energy production of the cell. So if we can improve our mitochondria for self repair, which does happen when you use even the mild soft chamber hyperbaric therapies. We can actually improve brain damaged areas from stroke or traumatic brain injury, help with infections, help with chronic fatigue, 
Um, and that's what the chamber looks like. It's usually recommended at uh, multiple one hour sessions at 4.2 PSI, which is 1.3 atmospheres. I am at sea level, right outside the window. You can possibly see um, sea level out there. That's overlooking uh, Atlantic Highlands, uh, New Jersey. And um, we're at one atmosphere here at 1.3 is like 11 feet of seawater. So, you know, you have to pop your ears when you're going under the bottom of a swimming pool. Um, it's the same situation there. The last three slides are, are really, um, and I'm sure um, Eleanor will make available to have uh, in your hands what I'm telling my patients to do and recommending things that you've heard about from everybody else. I want to just highlight some important um, behaviors and especially some important supplements. Uh, I just had the opportunity to work with um, virologists and uh, infectious disease specialists when Dr. Tom Moorcroft and Darren Engels and myself uh, gave I'm a ski retreat conference series um, for the second year. We're going to do it again February 6th to 10th next year if we can all travel. Um, and do another Lyme conference at this beautiful, uh, at, at the base of the uh, Alta Snowbird, if we can make it all happen. But um, it's really great when you have a lot of smart people uh, together. Dr. Toria was there, Dr. Atlanta was there, Atlanta was there. Um, and, and the other people who were in the audience uh, really took a lot of take home messages because, hey, what do we do with, at, at that time we call it coronavirus, but now we know it's COVID-19. Everybody's going to tell you, wash your hands thoroughly. Absolutely. 20 seconds, and that's a long time, so you should really say happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, etc. And get 20 seconds out of it. And it should be in warm water. And you really need to do that. You need to eat properly. But the biggest thing is, not, is to get good quality sleep. If you can get good quality sleep, six, six, seven to nine hours of sleep every single night, you can repair and boost your immune system. Meryl, stop shaking your head. <laughs> uh, you should really make sure that you get between seven and nine hours of sleep daily. You should wake up in the morning. Instead of having a cup of coffee, you should do 16 ounces of water, quality water, first thing in the morning to get your body moving before your coffee. You want to put water in your body first. In order to boost your immune system, there are certain supplements that are really important to take. Um, you need a quality, appropriate B complex vitamins with methylfolate. That's a the problem with the MTHFR gene abnormality, you want methylized folate, you want methyl B12. Quality zinc, selenium at 200 micrograms, vitamin C, um, good quality brands are listed here. Uh, a broad spectrum probiotic, you should rotate your brand every month. You shouldn't stay on the same probiotic all the time. It's good to change the bacteria up in your body. Vitamin D, I usually would recommend to start with 5,000 a day, but you should get your blood test done every three to four months, making sure your goal between 60 and 90 is your blood test is achieved. Uh, some people who get sick, I'll tell them to take 50,000 for three days in a row, and most infections, viral infections, will be improved upon significantly. Um, if I was exposed to people around me who were concerned with COVID-19 or other viruses, I would use Argentum nasal spray. Uh, it's a silver nasal spray, great for allergies and mold as well. Uh, Biocide and throat spray. Uh, three to five sprays at the back of your throat. It does have a little alcohol in it, so anybody with alcoholism should not be touching that, but it's a great antiviral mixture of about 17 different herbs. Um, Olivirex is an excellent uh, antiviral capsule with olive leaf. Um, there's some really good studies now on melatonin. I just read something earlier today with really high doses of melatonin being used somewhere in the 40 milligram to 80 milligram. I have never used that. I'm not recommending that, but I know the safety behind some of these high doses are there. It does help as an immune modulator. It's a great antioxidant. Uh, extra vitamin C twice a day, extra vitamin A, usually in your multi, but you could definitely use mycelized vitamin A drops, uh, 200,000 units for a couple days when you have a viral illness. Extra zinc would be great. We do intravenous vitamin C infusions uh, in our office. Um, I've actually, like I said before, we've had the hospitalists use three grams every six hours for patients with COVID-19. Um, I talked before about Tylenol and N-acetylcysteine usage, so 1,800 milligrams of N-acetylcysteine. If Tylenol is used, uh, per Tylenol capsule, please. And then uh, liposomal glutathione, 
Uh, liposomal delivery system does not really work much better if you don't have a gallbladder, but liposomal glutathione is fantastic. Uh, as a, again, putting that availability of that garbage man to get in your system. Alpha lipoic acid at 600 milligrams once a day or twice a day. It's been extremely beneficial. People have shortness of breath problems. I use transfer factor, which is another way to boost our immune system. Not everybody needs to use all of these items. These are just some of the tools in my cabinet I can use in order to help people. If you really start having lung symptoms, lung system symptoms, lomatia with a little elderberry, uh, I have something, we use something called lung and immune support, uh, drops of water, with water and andrographis is an excellent antiviral. Um, and if I can get to the last slide, which I'd love to get to, there we go. Um, the, the summary, and we're gonna have time for questions and answers, hopefully. Um, Oh gosh, where is? Sorry, I just lost that last page. Um, you really need to think about treating the person who has the ailment and not the ailment the person has. That's the key. Don't panic. Oh my God, it touched my face. Oh my God, wash it. Do some antivirals. Squirt some of the argentum into you. Throw your throat spray in there with the uh, the um, <clears throat> the biocidin. You follow these tips to minimize your disease exposures, avoid close contact, use your mask, don't touch your nose and face, uh, eat a rainbow of vegetables and colors, cut the junk out of your diet, stay well hydrated, 60% of your weight in ounces of water per day. 60% of your weight in ounces of water per day. So if you weigh 180 ounces, 180 pounds, that would be 108 ounces of water. Um, exercise and get fresh air daily. Take time to chill and enjoy your family. Start now and give yourself the best opportunity to resist what you're exposed to. Should you have a difficult time in finding any of these vitamins, any, any place, there's a vitamin uh, store within my building. Uh, that's two light vitamins at AOL.com. You can leave your phone number and they will ship it to you without any charges for shipping at this current time uh, because of this COVID event. I would love to have the opportunity to once again say thank you so very much for allowing me into your homes and I'd be more than happy to stick around for any kind of questions that people would have. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. That was so much information, so much value there. Um, if you guys are wanting to see this again, um, we will be posting it up usually within two days. We post the recording up um, and uh, we also have been putting it onto our YouTube channel and we have it on, we're getting the iTunes podcast. It should be approved and set up here really soon. And then we have two other podcast channels that our stuff is already available on as well. Um, if you have subscribed to Tribe Talk, you will get emails on this stuff. If you have subscribed to our newsletter at Modern Holistic Health, you will get updates on that with links so that you can go in and subscribe so that you can go in and listen to any of these. Um, also, I put into the chat box, if you wanna grab the link, the, um, the uh, place where Dr. Dave was talking about where you could order your supplements. Right now, if you guys haven't already noticed, I'm sure you have, if you've been looking for supplements, it's very hard to find them right now. Very, very hard to find them. Um, and so uh, Dr. Dave did tell me that, um, that they are doing pretty good with being able to maintain some stock. And so what we're doing is we're providing you as many resources as we can so that if you go to wherever you're normally going, uh, to find like your vitamin C and you can't find it there, that you have another resource that you can go to. And so, um, you know, definitely copy and paste that into your uh, browser so that you can go in and you can have that as another resource. Um, it looks like we've got, I think we've got a couple of questions here. Let me see if I can find them. Does anyone have any other questions? Actually, I think I answered some of these in the chat. Does anyone have any questions? You can go into the chat and you can ask really quick. And I'll check the uh, Facebook page and see if anyone is asking questions there. All right, I'm not seeing anything come through. Well, we'll give it another minute here, just a sec and see if anybody has any questions.
I have a question that I think people might might we get this we get asked this all the time with you went over so many things that are you know high in toxins if you had to go for your top one or two things that people can do right now to change you know to reduce their toxic load what would you say you know would be the most important things for them to pull the most important toxins to remove i believe are mercury aluminum and arsenic getting the plastics out of your life and avoiding glyphosate those are the major items that i would hone in on so again organic food colorful fruits and veggies you want all the colors of the rainbow every single day. You really want to think about um, you are what you eat eats. I know I mentioned that before. I have my cat who's trying to jump on my lap. I'm sorry. Um, um, you are what you eat eats that you can't excrete. So think about where the source of food you got from. It was wrapped in plastic, okay. It was wrapped in aluminum foil, not okay. I'm going to, the, to, right now I go to a restaurant and I get a takeout order if I'm not cooking at home. I have to then bring it to my house, sterilize the table I'm gonna put the product on. I'm gonna then try not to use my gloves, take a spatula, take the food out of that takeout tin and put it into a Corning or a Pyrex. And then everything else gets not brought into your house, leave all the crap outside your house touch only the food with utensils, change your gloves, don't touch your face, all that good stuff. But you wanna try not to reheat anything in aluminum foil. You really wanna keep things as clean as possible. Organic, pesticide free. Um, and then the, again, the, like mercury foods, those are the bad guys. Those are the major ones I come across in my, and it's amazing when you get plastic influence out of people or you get them to eat more organic wow my bowel habits work a lot better is it only the probiotics you put me on no it's a variety of things that we've done in order to let this be accomplished so i really think you have to look at the whole person who has a disease and again not just a disease one piece at a time yeah that's a really good answer um because people can get overwhelmed um, I know that whenever you guys see this, you're like, oh my God, I got to change all this stuff. Well, um, yeah, you do. But you know, if, if it's overwhelming for you to do, to change everything out this weekend, then just start changing a few things at a time and take those first steps like Dr. Dave recommended to you. And then, you know, every month or every week, you know, do something new to reduce your, your exposures. And the next thing you know, you'll look back and you know, six months later, you're gonna have, you know, you're gonna have everything changed out from your toothpaste to your cleaning items at home and all of that stuff. So, you know, you don't have to get overwhelmed with it, um, but just start to take some action because these things really, really do um, inhibit your body from working properly. And that leaves you vulnerable to get you know, a really bad reaction from this virus where, you know, other people that are taking care of themselves are, they're not worried about it because they know that their immune system is going to take care of them. Um, here's a question on Facebook. And Carol, forgive me if I don't get it right, but I, I think I see what's going on here. Um, it, it looks like she's not sure if she recently had a reaction to Andrographis. Am I saying that right? Yes. Or, or COVID because her husband was exposed to COVID. So if your husband was exposed, you were probably exposed too. And I can answer part of this. Some people are getting a rash. They are getting you know, a rash on their body when they're getting exposed to this uh, virus. Um, but the other part, the andrographis, I'm not sure. Can you answer that, Dr. Dave? I haven't seen reactions yet. I've only heard about reactions. You can get a rash from andrographis. You can get a rash from any, any different product out there. So if your body is saying, hey, I don't like it, what's the symptom? Some people say it's a Herxheimer reaction. When you take a product and your body sees a breakdown of toxins from that product as it gets into your body. Some people will get a rash, some people will get a headache, some people will get mental confusion, some people will get diarrhea. So if you've tried a product, which we know works really well in most people, but it didn't work in you, don't continue to take it. You know, I gave you a list of a number of things that have been helpful in general. You don't need to take all of it. You need to take a good portion of it when you're exposed. 
But if you have a bad side effect from anything, then definitely talk to your doc or talk to your nutritionist or figure out a way of augmenting it. Hey, let me not take it. Let me take it a less of a dose. Try it every other day. Wait three days, start it again. Oh, it came back again. Oh, it's definitely the product then. But if you had one bad reaction one day, well, well, maybe it's because you had a different food at the same time that caused that problem. Yeah. So, and the other thing I, I didn't mention, you said about what you really need to be aware of is what you put on your skin and what you put in your hair and what you put on your body. Those are also important. So we talk about organic food and organic and, and pesticide free items. You want to think about not putting lots of terrible things on your skin, in your hair. Get organic shampoos. Most of the shampoos have sodium lauryl sulfate in it. You don't want that. You know, most of the hair dyes are loaded with toxins. You want to find as most natural product or like a henna product, but henna doesn't last long. So you really need to do your homework to find out what, quant what type of hair products to use. If anybody has great sources on organic quality hair products, um, I saw a, a patient of mine ask that question. Um, Ellen asked that question uh, on the chat group. If you really have the answer to that, I would love to see uh, a listing of where we can get organic hair dyes because that question comes up quite a bit in my practice as I try to do environmental medicine. I don't always have the answers for everybody, but I try to get that. So if anybody has that answer, I'd appreciate that. Um, it, it, it's really important to what you're putting on your skin, what you're putting in your mouth every single day. Glass bottle water, lots of it. 60% of your body weight in water. Nice. And then um, here is another one from Catherine saying that uh, she's wanting to know what your thoughts are on Laura Sidon. She says that she's been diagnosed with fibromyalgia and Hashimoto's and has been experiencing a lot of brain fog and crazy pain, including frequent electric body jolts, like electric shocks. And her doctor is suggesting adding Lauracidin to her already long list of supplements. So Lauracidin or Lauracidin, depending where you're from, is also called monolaurin. Um, it's a coconut-based uh, antiviral agent and immune booster. I find it very helpful when people have infections to add Lauracidin to their system. Usually it's in pellet form. You swish it in your mouth a couple scoops three times a day works fairly well. She's describing neuropathy. Her nerve pain is jolting and giving her um, electric shocks. These items are better handled with alpha lipoic acid and benfotiamine, for example, a thiamine derivative B1 vitamin um, to be very helpful in that symptom that she's describing. The loracetin would definitely help boost her immune system antivirally but I don't think that's the, the answer with the symptoms she's presenting with. If someone told me that, um, I would think about, do I have another disease that's causing neuropathy, maybe a tick-borne disease, or do I have just a condition of peripheral vascular disease? Do I have, have hair growth on my toes? You know, if it's in her feet, does she have circulation down to her feet? Well, no, I don't shave my, my legs as much as I used to. Well, you're having a circulation problem. If you can't grow hair on your toes, then you can't have circulation. You need circulation to grow hair, by the way. Um, so I have so many diabetics who come in to see me for the first time, and I say, could you take your shoes and socks off? It's like, why didn't anybody else ask me to do that? I said, I have no idea, but you need to find out what your feet look like. That's really vital in diabetics especially because they have poor circulation and they have neuropathy. So a long-winded answer to the Laura Seedon point of view was it sounds like she has neuropathy. Um, I would think more, more of the glutathione pathways uh, watch out for mold because that might also cause those problems and then promote her alpha lipoic acid and uh, benfotine. Yeah, yeah. And and we would recommend along those same lines too. You know, we've actually seen different types of um, infections that uh, have caused these exact types of electrical shocks and even like brain shocks. Um, so in the in various parts of the body and in the brain, and it turns out that the variable there was uh, was an infection. And once we once we you know identified what that was, and we eliminated the infection, the electrical shocks went away. But it can be other things too. Environmental toxins can also inhibit you know proper nervous system function. You could have a combination of environmental toxins and infections causing that. And then. Sometimes it could be mechanical. So when you say that you're having 
an electric shock, you know, is it all over the body? Like exactly where is it? Because if you're suddenly having an electrical shock in a certain part of the body, we may want to go back and trace where the dorsal nerve root is. You know, you could be having a pinch in the dorsal nerve root somewhere along your spine and, and, the, and it's giving you a symptom of like, like a shocking feeling. So it could be a biomechanical issue as well. And so you just want to, you know, maybe look a little bit deeper into that. Um, what other, let's see, it's hard for me to scroll through here. Let me see. I have extreme fatigue due to Epstein-Barr. Any suggestions on vitamins, minerals, etc., that can help improve my immune system and energy levels? So I'll let you give some recommendations, but let me start with this. You cannot out-supplement a bad diet and you can't out-supplement a crappy, crappy lifestyle habits. And you know, if you have if you have chronic Epstein Barr, in other words, if that Epstein Barr is always the cause of you feeling bad all the time, then you're not doing something right to take care of yourself. Many, many people can live super healthy, super happy lives and have Epstein Barr. I'm one of them. Um, but you've got to get your immune system healthy again. You, you know, so what are you doing would be my question first of all. Uh, but uh, Dr. Dave, what else do you have to add to that? No, you had a perfect uh, explanation. If you go into any supermarket, let's say you went to Costco, and you tested 100 people if they had exposure to Epstein-Barr in the past, 95% of them would be IgG positive. I've been exposed to Epstein-Barr. I have high levels of IgG Epstein-Barr. Well, maybe the, the disease is activated. I have IgM and IgG and Ig. Uh, NA, the different components of Epstein-Barr profiling, those people will have chronic fatigue from it. And I have plenty of IgM active Epstein-Barr patients that live a really good life when they take care of themselves. Everything I mentioned is vital to reduce inflammatory triggers to make your disease worsen. In Epstein-Barr, your immune system is definitely on overdrive to try to fight this infection. And a lot of people don't have good immunity. Uh, we can go off on a tangent talking about doing IgG levels to find out, do you make immunoglobulins to fight this off? And those people really need to find out ways to, to beef up their subclasses of their IgG system. People, some people need IVIG in order to, to take care of some of these chronic diseases. But usually for Epstein-Barr, it's not that much of a concern. Epstein-Barr is a, is a condition that causes chronic fatigue. And how do we fix chronic fatigue? Well, if they have heavy metal burden, or they have a lot of lead in their system, um, if they had a lot of MRIs and they got a bunch of gadolinium in them from their MRIs in the past, and we don't chelate it out of their body, they're gonna have chronic fatigue from their Lyme disease or their Epstein-Barr or their mycoplasma or their cytomegalovirus or their, or their, or their, or their, disease, their autoimmune thyroiditis is not going to get better until you can detoxify, oxygenate their tissues, get them to exercise, get them to sleep, get them to take some important nutrients. There really are a good list of nutrients I mentioned that are antiviral. What is Epstein-Barr? It's a viral. So you mentioned loracetin. So I would say 75% of my Epstein-Barr patients, I have recommended loracetin to and L-glutamine to help boost their immune system. And some of the other antivirals, the olive leaf extract, the olivirex product, uh, or even olive leaf extract itself. Um, you want it, vitamin C, zinc. Well, everything that you saw on that antiviral list, yeah. which was a little bit more specified to COVID-19, but it really talks about how do we stop viruses from affecting our body's immune system and then what else affects our immune system to help us fight off the viruses? So it's a roundabout answer for you, but that's what I would do. I have patients who come in and get intravenous vitamin C when they have flare-ups of their Epstein bar bar. Yeah. And they're like, wow, you woke me up. I feel great. Or they get a, a IV vitamin cocktail with B complexes, glutathione, et cetera, and they feel great. So everybody's different. And you have to look at each person individually. There's no cookbook that says this autistic child needs to do this, 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 and this, and they're going to be done. No, it's everybody, not 
just I'm not just saying autistic kids, but everybody doesn't follow the same rules. And when we have people with cardiovascular disease and we have people with diabetes, those are comorbidities that make things worse. So you got to control those. Person comes in, my hemoglobin A1C is 12.4, but I have a lot of head colds all the time. Well, there must be a reason because your diabetes control is terrible. We're not going to be able to get rid of your circulation problems and your cardiovascular disease until you fix the diabetes. So treat the person who has a disease. Yeah, that's, and that's what we call personalized medicine. That's where medicine is moving. Um, you know, the, you know, um, unarguably the healthiest people on the planet are following that model. They're understanding how their body works and they're working, you know, with the environment, not trying to fight against it. And, and, you know, and, th and this is something else that I want to mention and people who have been successful in overcoming their, their, um, you know, their viral issues, um, they, they usually know what the triggers are that will make like their Epstein-Barr flare, for example, or their herpes flare. And one of the very, very common triggers is stress and lack of sleep. You have to get your sleep and you have to, you have to manage your stress. We can't keep living the way that we've been living all, you know, for the last three, three decades that we're burning the candle at both ends, trying to make everything work. For what? You know, what are you getting at the end of the day for that? I used to live that lifestyle. I had three sports medicine practices. I was a single mom managing, you know, three practices and a house and a kid, you know, and, and I ended up getting super sick. I almost died. And, you know, I, and, and, and I was wondering why I would get these flare-ups of the herpes blister on my lip, which, by the way, when it would flare up, it would get so bad, I would have to stop work for a week because my whole bottom part of my face and my neck would swell up. Um, and then at the Epstein-Barr, it would flare up for the same thing. So these viruses, you know, we live with thousands of viruses inside of us all the time. And there are a few of them that can really, you know, make us not feel well if we don't take care of ourselves. So all of the stuff that Dr. Dave, you know, and I are talking about as far as, far as you know, supplementation and eating and environmental toxins and staying away from all this, all that stuff is important, but you need to manage your stress and you need to manage your lifestyle, your sleep, like these types of things too, because if you've got a lot of um, um, heightened emotional experiences, which a lot of people are having this right now, especially if you're glued to the TV and you're watching that thing every day, shut the dang thing off. Just shut it off. You don't need it. Okay. You're getting these heightened emotional experiences that are raising your cortisol, throwing you into fight or flight. And that's setting off a whole cascade of events. That's going to leave you very, very vulnerable for viruses to come back and make you sick or even bacterial infections. So you really, really need to manage that right now. You need to get out and get exercise. You need to get plenty of sleep and you need to manage your stress. Um, any other questions that we have? Dr. Tori, can you see any in the chat box? Thank you everybody, enjoy your spring. It's beautiful outside usually. It is. We have a question from Bunny and she wants to know if vitamin A and E assist with vitamin C to bring down inflammation, help with fibromyalgia and brain fog. I don't see why they wouldn't work synergistically. They are, uh, vitamin A is a fat-soluble vitamin. It's antiviral in nature. Vitamin C is a building block for most immune function. Um, you said vitamin A, vitamin C, and what was your third one? D. E. D? E. E. E is an elephant. Yes. Uh, another essential fatty, uh, another uh, fat-soluble vitamin. Um, really good for circulation, uh, oxygen-carrying capacity. So I, I think they all work synergistically. Most quality multivitamins, you should, especially for vitamin E, when you look on your vitamin, it should not be D alpha tocopherol only. It should be a mixed tocopherol. So um, vitamin E has tocopherol and it has tocotrienols. The tocopherols are alpha, beta, gamma, delta. You don't want to just be alpha tocopherol. You want the species A, B, C, D or A, B, D, E um, that you want in the uh, and the different types of vitamin E species. So that's important when you're using vitamin E alone. A lot of the studies initially came out was just on the D-alpha tocopherol, and they didn't prove very good benefit from a cardiovascular point of view. That's because they used the wrong one. Um, and then you wanna just look at the quality of the products that you're getting. 
if you're, and I'm not trying to knock down GNC or Vita cost, but sometimes their products are less than what actually is on the product itself. So a lot of times it's been analyzed that when you buy these big brand name companies from a discounted warehouse, what's on the outside of the bottle is not always what's on the inside of the bottle as well. So that's why you want to try to find good quality vitamins from reputable companies um, that come directly from the manufacturer of Thorn or some of these other quality uh, companies, Claire Labs and, and uh, Designogen. And there's a whole bunch of good, really good quality companies that don't come out with Swanson's baby shampoo or Swanson's vitamin or whatever. Um, and again, I'm not trying to knock any big company, so please don't get upset with me if I mention a name. Uh, but when they advertise on television, Centrum Silver is the best thing, and I will knock Centrum Silver, because Centrum Silver has lead in it. They don't tell you that part. Um, so why would I be taking Centrum Silver? Oh, it's advertised on television. It's great for people over 50. Well, yeah, it's great advertising. You know, like um, Align is a wonderful probiotic if you want to take a probiotic that has this amount of probiotic. You need probiotic and you need probiotic to change. You don't just need a line. So there's a lot of great marketing out there. If you have a, a knowledgeable functional medicine doctor to work with, then you win. Because a lot of times they've gone to these great conferences that uh, a lot of people who I, who I see in the audience here who've spoken today uh, go to these great conferences. Uh, it's wonderful to be able to share this information. And Billy wants to say hello too. <laughs> say hello, Billy. So he's been around oh. my leg the whole time. A sweet little boy. Um, I have three cats, so he's the one who's been hopping on my leg the whole time here. <laughs> um, the uh, It's been a pleasure to work with you. If there's any further questions, uh, you can email me. It's drdavedornfeld at gmail.com. D D R Dave Dornfeld D O R N F E L D uh, at gmail.com and I'll be happy to answer any other questions thereafter if I can. Um, love sharing this event with you. Thank you so much for the invitation. If there's any other questions, I'll be happy to hang out. But I just wanted to say thank you. Have a nice spring. Enjoy. Stay safe. Drink water first thing in the morning. Get your seven to nine hours of sleep every day. Keep the environment from kicking your butt and learn yeah. how to properly yeah we really appreciated you coming on we appreciate it and um and we know that you're busy if you if you can stay on to answer some more questions you're welcome to um dr thompson what is your schedule look like are you free for the next 10 minutes or so yeah okay so so we can stay on for those of you who want to um i've got i'm seeing a few questions over here of people asking for specific supplementation for different conditions so let me just kind of cover that in a blanket statement here as far as the supplements and stuff for covid someone's asking can taking all these supplements actually fight off covid from affecting you too badly or is there a possibility that the symptoms are smaller um yes and yes um, and uh, I popped in to the chat a, a, an article that we created about almost eight weeks ago before this really hit the fan. And I put in there all of the references, all the scientific literature showing you how the different uh, vitamins and minerals actually help. So like, for example, we know that vitamin C prevents viral replication in the cell. And so I put the scientific literature, I put all the references in that article. So go into the chat and look at the post that I made um, and so that you can see how this stuff works. As far as for these other different um, issues that people are saying, you know, do I take this for this or this for that? Remember that it's not as easy as that. This is not a one size fits all type of approach. That's what you get in the traditional medical model. And, and it just doesn't work even when it comes to supplements. You know, if, if you're asking, you know, should I take this for this condition or that for that condition? Well, we really need to figure out what's causing the condition in the first place. Because again, you know, if you've got, um, 
you know, a particular infection that's giving you a particular symptom, there's no amount of supplements that's going to make that symptom necessarily go away. We need to go in and figure out what the infection is, target the infection, get rid of the infection, and then the symptoms are going to go away. And so that's kind of a blanket statement because I'm seeing a lot of questions. I have fibromyalgia. Should I take this? I have this. Should I take this? It doesn't really work like that, right? Um, Let's see if there's any, someone's asking about the ion cleanse. And I know, Dr. Dave, this is a perfect question for you. Um, I've been, do you know Debbie? She says she's been receiving many questions from her clients asking if, um, if she knows anyone that has used the ion cleanse with COVID-19. She personally doesn't know anyone yet, but she knows that you use the ion cleanse with clients. I have used the ion cleanse with clients. I think it's another very good way of detoxing the body a little slower, a little safer in your home. No IVs involved, no GI distress like you get with oral DMSA. Um, I don't know anybody who's used it with COVID. Um, it's a really good therapy that gently will allow your body to um, stimulate your pathways to excrete toxins some people who use so ion cleanses you put your feet in water put a little salt in it there's a current that runs through the water you do it for 20 to 30 minutes and some green or brown or yellow water comes up and they all say oh my god this is like toxins coming out of me into the water system and look at all this fungus and look at all this mold and look at all this metals that are in the water well they really haven't been able to prove what's in the water um, as being the toxins that they're actually trying to get rid of. But what they did prove, they did a, a pretty neat study uh, using the ion cleanse uh, by uh, AMD, by the way, because that's a, a company to work with. And if you contact me, I can get you more information about that. Um, so they did a study, they, they collected the urine for five days in a row, 24 hours for five days in a row in people. And then they gave them one 30 minute session. And then they collected the urine for five days in a row of people. And they found an increasing amount, especially on day three, after they did the 30 minute session of toxins being excreted in the urine greater than it did before doing this foot cleanse. So we find that to be pretty interesting. Um, what, what's really good in the autism world is they've actually shown improvement in behavior. So there's a way we, we measure kids, it's called the ATEC scale, A-T-E-C. Uh, it's an autism uh, checklist um, on, on functionality of the kids' uh, abilities. And it's a, a, a parent grading scale or a doctor grading scale as to the, the good habits and the bad habits. And if you can get your kid to improve their ATEC by 10%, 15%, that's usually great. We've had reductions of about 30% seen in the studies on these autistic kids that were using their feet in water with a little salt in it with an electric current going through it. So there are some enhanced abilities for the parasympathetic system to be stimulated so they can rest and digest, as they call it, to allow their body to rid themselves of toxins through their kidneys easier. Is this going to help COVID? Anything to reduce toxic load, I think will be helpful. So I, I can't tell you that I know anybody who's used it for COVID-19. I just think it's another one of the tools. I have an infrared sauna in my house. I have a hyperbaric chamber in my house. I have a ion cleanse unit in my house. I even put the ion cleanse unit inside the infrared sauna when I'm trying to sweat and then detox my feet. Do I use them every day? Absolutely not. Should I? I wish I had the time for it. There's the worst full letter word in the English dictionary, time coming in. Yeah, we have a little more time now because I'm doing telemedicine rather than seeing patients as much, although we are going to reopen on uh, Monday in the office slowly um, after taking some hiatus out of the office. But <clears throat> we're going to try to take care of people. But, uh, but I, I mentioned all these different modalities that are available to us. It's a tool. You know, I do IV chelation therapy on myself every two weeks. I want to get the stuff out of my body that I've accumulated. And I'm really good about not having tuna, and I'm really good about not having arsenic-coated chicken. But one day someone's going to bring in a chicken salad sandwich for lunch, and I'm going to eat it, and I'm going to chelate thereafter to get it out of me. 
the arsenic and the chemicals. We're all exposed to stuff. How much do you do that's bad for us? Affects our immune system. I have a chat group with a bunch of my friends. Where we, we text back and forth every day. Usually it's about sports or it's about concerts or this at the next thing. And one of my buddies said, hey, can you tell me how to detox? I said, here's a link. Come listen to our talk and maybe we'll learn some stuff. Um, I hope I was able to shed some light on a lot of the things that I really feel help boost our system, strengthen our immune system so that these diseases don't become huge events. My mom used to catch a cold and her immune system wasn't so good and she'd get a disease from a cold. I don't want people to get colds turn into diseases. I want you to really find a way to boost your immune system and win. That's a really great close for the day. Dr. Dave, thanks again so much for being here. Um, someone, someone is asking if we have, uh, if you have information for parents on autistic children on your website. There are some, uh, I do have a couple of um, PowerPoints that I've done. I did a PowerPoint in Egypt um, on autism and Lyme disease. I've done a couple of PowerPoints. There's one on uh, from autism one I did a couple of years ago. Okay. That's, uh, that's up there. So if they look at the links, I'm sorry, if they look at the, um, I believe there's, if you go across the top there, you'll see conferences and various events that we've done before, but there are a couple, and if they have a problem, they can email me and I can try to get them some more information. Okay, yeah, that's great. Um, so just go and check out Dr. Dornfeld. Um, he does work with a lot of children uh, and children with autism. Um, we do work with some kids, but most of the cases we work with are with adults, the majority of them. So Dr. Dave would be your man if it's, uh, you know, if we've got uh, a kiddo that's struggling here, I would definitely um, go ahead and reach out to him. Thank you so much, everybody, for your time today. We love you guys. And we appreciate that you, um, you know, that you're here with us. And we look forward to uh, seeing you again. Tune in next Tuesday at 12 o'clock Central Time. And we've got some more great guests lined up. And uh, we will be sending you notifications of those guests um, before before they uh, before the days of the launch and you can also keep in touch with us on Crusaders for help thank you very much have a great weekend guys love you bye bye, -bye now.